Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. Here's your weekly technical analysis of Chicago Soybean Complex. I'll start with Chicago soybeans themselves. The recovery in late July, up from the combined supports of the congestion formed from the lopsided diamond pattern between 13 even and 11.80 over October, December 2021, within which are the two 50% Fibonacci lines of the April 20 to February 22 move at 12.89 and the May 2019 to February 22 move at 12.75. Well, to put it lightly and as a minimum, this recovery kept beans in the teens. However, the pullback up has been awkward, to say the least. Prices effectively failed at the February to date 50% Fibonacci line at 15.32 and dropped back down through the long moving average, currently 15.26, plus the change gap and down through the 50% Fibonacci line on December 20 to February 22, 22 move at 14.51. Interestingly, it was only the congestion zone made up of the lesser Fibonacci lines at 1400, 1389 and 1378 that finally halted the in mid-August, that halted the fall in mid-August and turned the market back up again, though not by much compared to the size of the original decline. Prices punched up through the 50% Fibonacci line at 14.51 in late August, finding some support there in conjunction with the flatlining short moving average at the time currently at 14.40 and peaking out on the 24th of August with not only an indecisive spinning top but also being capped at the time by the declining short medium moving average currently at 14.37. The subsequent dip in early September once again found support from the congestion between the lesser Fibonacci lines at 1400, 1389 and 13.78 and this time the resultant rally punched up through the declining short medium moving average into some fairly free air above, all the way until just short of the slowly ascending long moving average, currently at 1526, where the market peaked last Tuesday with a shooting star pattern, type 1 bearish. Interestingly, the decline was somewhat half hearted this time, with prices only managing to get down to the 50% Fibonacci line of the December 20 to February 2022 move at 1451, where they have stayed. Now, I think I can explain this lack of decisiveness, decisiveness on the part of the market. You see, the long moving average, the resistance last week, is rising and would be a good corralling resistance on the top side in an otherwise bullish move. However, a new factor has entered the frame from above. From above, we have the declining medium moving average, currently 1512, which this week has moved down enough to be the first line of resistance overhead. Hence, the market's indecision on whether to test or not this new factor. At the moment, one can surmise that the market may be becoming pressured between from above this medium moving average and from below by the 50 cent Fibonacci line and short medium moving average, currently at 1437. This could possibly lead to a small spurt of action soon, but right now to see what is next, well, it is not easy. I suspect we may see a sideways to slightly higher action, but even saying that, I have doubts as to whether prices can attain the heights of early August just yet. Chicago Soybean Mill I'm glad that this commodity is a little easier to interpret than the main soybeans contract. Now what we have here is a number of patterns hitting off of each other at the same time, uh, sort of. The immediate pattern is a May to date ascending expanding wedge pattern, something I pointed out many weeks ago. This is now developed currently at 405.10 to 474.10, though it is not a perfect pattern, having been breached topside just before the last change gap. Nevertheless, the base of the pattern has held, utilizing the neckline of another pattern as its lower trend line, and that is the neckline of the huge December 2021 to June 2022 head and shoulders continuation pattern. Let's say currently at 405.10. This pattern has been the signature pattern here since last year and it resonates even now. It has the unusual though not unique feature of a head and shoulders top over February to April crowning the head of the bigger head and shoulders pattern. Now going back to the neckline, this shallow uptrend has been the base of a quad and arguably a quintuple 
bottom, resulting in the attempt higher in late August. Now going back to the head and shoulder, the big head and shoulders continuation pattern. When these occur, I immediately look to see if, as part of the construction of the second shoulder, we see a reverse head and shoulder pattern. And I did draw a prospective neckline for this, currently at 460.40. However, the reverse head and shoulders pattern did not really materialize. And instead, we saw the formation of the upper trend line of the ascending, expanding wedge pattern. And that's currently at 474.10. So after all of this, we now have the market sitting initially above the moving averages and now sitting on top of them. Interestingly, from last week's moving averages having two pointing up and two pointing down, a classic indicator of an indecisive trend, we've moved this week to three pointing up and one just starting to point upwards, an indicator of a bullish incentive building up. Ahead and above, we still have the change gap, 421.90 to 455.60. This will be the first thing that would need to be filled in if the bullish incentive is to firm up. And to be honest, we have already gone quite a way towards that. But it is worth noting that if the market wishes to do that, well, it still has a long way to go to fill it. As for trying lower, well, aside from the moving averages below, we have the key 50% Fibonacci of the October 2021 to March 22 move at 40050. And my thoughts on this, on tackling this support, do not vary from what I said last week. And I quote, well, Good luck with that. The market has tried that a total of six times so far since May with no result. I just keep an eye on the parameters of the ascending expanding wedge pattern as that seems to be the key here. End of quote. Chicago soybean oil. The market bottomed out, halting its decline and halted by the congestion band mainly dating from as far back as 2011 and 2012 between 57.64 and 59.44. Since then we've seen a gradual ascent, not really obstructed by anything much, passing through the 50% Fibonacci line the January 2021 to April 2022 move, the long moving average currently at 68.33 and the short medium moving average currently 64.48. Interestingly, prices managed to establish themselves over all but the long moving average. At the same time, attempts to revert back down, such as this past Monday's combined key reversal down and bearish engulfing pattern, have well been met with countering bullish moves, such as Tuesday's immediate countering bullish Harami. This hasn't stopped elements in the market from trying, as can be seen by yesterday's counter to the counter bearish Harami. My immediate thoughts on all of this are threefold. Threefold and a bit. Firstly, up ahead, we have the two resistances available of the now declining medium moving average. And that's currently at 69.46. And also the recent April to July 50% Fibonacci line at 71.97. Interestingly, I suspect the power of the two may be diminishing a little, as previously they had been intertwined. And as we all know, the sum of these together was greater than them each individually when they separated. My second thought is more strategic. What if this latest move up is the upswing in a larger June or May to date bearish halfway hesitation? Now, I have no justification for this pattern as yet, but it is worth considering as in the longer term, such a pattern could fit. Though, Of course, it doesn't need to fit. My third thought is the implications of the newly drawn December 2021 to June 2022 bullish Andrews pitchfork, especially the lower time, currently at 64.71. This is a large pitchfork, a really big one, and one that could only have been drawn since July. However, in that time, the lower time has asserted itself as the primary de facto uptrend in this market, despite the occasional piercing. I suggest this is the one to watch on any concerted attempt lower. Finally, the bit. The bit is the change gap from last week between 65 and a quarter and 67.05. Now, the market has done a lot to fill in that gap, but part of that gap is still there and this should not be ignored, 
especially on any attempts higher. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyrights Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here comes the final bit.